and thank the organizers for <coughs> giving me the chance to speak at this uh, uh, famous institute. <coughs> so this will be uh, two case studies. The first one is uh, complex session. Uh, <coughs> the question we ask is uh, this L2 minimization uh, for this problem is quite easy, but the, the solution is dense. You, usually people just discard this dense solution. We, the question we ask whether such kind of dense solution actually is helpful for solving this sparse problem. The, then the, the second story is uh, related it's uh, the binary perception in the teacher and student setting, and we want to ask how to learn uh, as fast as possible, so it's active and online learning, uh, how to design, design the questions or the queries. So the, now starts the first story. It's uh, uh, basically we uh, proposed an algorithm that is uh, uh, heuristic, it's called SSD, Short Solution Guided Decimation. This work was in collaboration with the student Samoti and uh, 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 research at the uh, Institute Panza. So, uh, what is complex assessment? Uh, we have already heard a lot about this. The problem is quite uh, defined, quite, quite easy. So, you have a matrix, and this matrix, uh, and you have a, a, a sparse signal. And the task is to, to, to reconstruct from the meshed vector Z the original sparse signal. Uh, so uh, for this matrix, you can regard each, 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 each line of this as uh, a measurement. So they are, in this case, the number of measurements is M. In this case, is 4. And the, Problem: The instance dimension is is n. Is, in this case, is, is is ten. So, so here we have two uh, parameters. One is the density of uh, measurement. Oh no no no! The density of measurement m over n. This is defined as alpha. So it's the compre compression uh, measurement density. And the other is the sparsity of the data. So this is rho. So is defined as the number of non-zero elements in the signal versus the total number of elements. In this case, it's three, so, uh, yeah, 0 0.3. So this is a problem. Uh, and the task is to, from this measurement vector Z, you want to reconstruct the hidden, the planet solution, H0, and the given matrix D. There are a huge uh, developments in recent years, actually start from the 1980s, and there are many excellent algorithms. For example, this orthogonal marching pursuit, and the similar orthogonal least square, and also the R1-based minimization. In statistical physics, we also have uh, this approximate message person, and even we have the statistical physics analysis. But it uh, seems uh, the story is still not completely solved. What is uh, unsatisfactory is that in almost most of the previous studies, theoretical and computer uh, mathematical studies, usually people assume this, me uh, this measurement matrix D is random and uh, satisfy the uh, condition is called RIP. Uh, uh, basically means if you pick a uh, number of columns of this matrix D, this measurement matrix D, and uh, all these columns, columns should be uh, uh, independent. Or, uh. But uh, in many situations, many situations, this uh, 
this measurement matrix might be highly structured. So there, there could be strong correlations in the corners. For example, in this quantum Monte Carlo simulation, you might want to, uh, from the green function, you, can, you want to get the density of this uh, something. <clears throat> yeah. And this is a fixed problem. And this measurement, this matrix key, K, for sure is quite non-random. So the, the problem is, but when you, uh, if you apply this uh, AMP and such other me such methods to, to such highly structured matrix, it seems it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, uh, so this <clears throat> our work is trying to uh, have a solution for for this case that when the matrix is highly, highly, highly uh, structured. <clears throat> but uh, Seems I'm a beginner in this complex system stuff, so I just from the beginning. What's the measurement? We have this T is a vector of dimension M is equal to measurement D times H, I know. But this actually is a measurement if you look at it as a kind of a singular value decomposition, you find the measurement D, the this uh, complex sensor actually is very is, is simple. First, uh, you uh, you uh, how do you say project this uh, original vector H to some uh, orthogonal base v1, v2, vn, and you get the coefficient, and then you uh, try to stretch the coefficient, this element, each element, and then you, for each, each coefficient, you apply multiply another matrix, another vector. So this is a measurement. So in principle, you can design, you can have many measurement matrices with these singular values and uh, this orthogonal vectors and that orthogonal matrix. For such uh, matrix, when you construct, usually they should be allowed to be uh, random and uh, independent. <clears throat> so for given such a uh, 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 matrix, when the, the number of measurement is less than the number of uh, the, the number of uh, data, data, data dimension, you can get the general solution. The H is, is equal to G plus uh, remainder term. And this G is the short solution. Uh, this composition problem has extremely many solutions, but one of them is the shortest. This is called the G. And the G is simply just the pseudo inverse of, of uh, this measured vector C. So, and this G is easy to obtain. It's, you just perform L2 minimization and you get a G. But the G is dense. Every element is non-zero. It's not what you want. So the question, we, we ask the question, whether although this G, this, this L2 minimization solution is dense, whether it still contains some information about the sparse uh, solution. So we performed some hand wave analysis. So this, uh, when, if we express this short, short solution G, we find it's uh, just uh, uh, the superposition of M vectors. So this G, the ice element can be decomposed into two parts. First is GIA and the second is GIB. And the GIA is only, is only related to 
the ice element of the hidden planet solution, HI. But the GIB is the uh, lowest term. It contains all the contributions of the other elements of this hidden planet solution. And you find that GIA and GIB are of the same order. So you cannot uh, get some information from this. But, but if you make a rank, uh, let's say, the absolute value of this maximum value and the, the next maximum value, so you can rank this, the element of the G. And you look at the, the index with the maximum, maximum value. And you, you look at the GI and the GLA and the GLB. <clears throat> and when in this analysis, when you look at this GI and GIA and, and GIB, you find a very important property that this GIB essentially depend, independent of this uh, element uh, of the index and it's such a value. Of course, it might be plus or minus. And the GIA already depends on this HI0, mm. so the, hidden, hidden, uh, the planet solution. So if you require that uh, this GL must be, be maximum, then it indicates that the GIA, uh, GLA, and the GLB should be the same sign. And since the GLB is more or less independent of the in index L, it's, uh, it's non zero. It indicates that this GLA should also be highly likely to be non zero. So the, so the hand wave argument is that if you look at this short solution G, and you look at the, the element with the highest value, highly likely this, this element in this original solution, this element H of zero should also be non-zero, at least. So this is the idea of our algorithm. We have, have did some check some simulations, and they find indeed <coughs> this this rank, the, when, the, when in the top rank index, it's highly probable that it's, uh, the index is non zero. And even this probability increases when the system size, the dimensionality increases. So we, based on this, uh, we can we just des design a very simple algorithm. Uh, the algorithm has two. Uh, steps. The first is the decimation routine, trying to figure out which which entries of the of the parent solution are highly likely to be to be non-zero, and then this backtracking is trying to refine the non-zero non entries. Yeah. So the algorithm goes as follows: given this. Given this problem incidence, <coughs> you find it get this uh, L2 minimization solution G, and then we get the largest element, and we assume this largest element the index of this HI HL0 should also be non-zero. So we then we, we delete one column from this matrix D, and we simplify the problem, and then we repeat this process again. <clears throat> so we uh, did some simulations, no, no theory, only simulations. Simulations uh, contains two parts. First, when this RIP conditions holds, so there are random measurement matrix, and IID, and the Gaussian distributed, and the maximum eigenvalue of the matrix versus uh, the minimum uh, single value of the order of one. So it's this is this Q is the measure of uh, structure structures. When it's of order one, it means it's quite random. And the second example is we 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 consider that this IP conditions are violated. In this case, 
we assume this D, matrix D, is the sum product of two matrices, D1 and D2. D1 is M times R dimension, and D2 is R times N dimension. Both are Gaussian. And in this case, when R, this number R approach M, this D becomes highly correlated. And this uh, single value Q becomes very large. So this is a, some simulation results for random Gaussian matrix. Uh, when this uh, measurement density, measurement versus dimension is 0 0.2, and uh, uh, we find that this is the sparsity of the signal. We find that uh, this uh, our algorithm seems to outperform this L1 minimization. And it performs, uh, slightly outperforms this orthogonal matching pursuit because they have similar philosophy. But it still uh, slightly performs, outperforms orthogonal uh, matching pursuit. And it, it is slightly worse than this AMP. AMP is slightly better. But AMP needs prior information about this signal. We don't have any prior information. But if we go to this highly uh, correlated matrix D, highly correlations, the story changes. Uh, for example, again, this measurement ratio is 0.2, and this the sparsity, when the sparsity of the signal increases, our algorithm doesn't, doesn't change, actually. It performs good when this uh, sparsity is, is less than certain critical value. But this OMP uh, fails when already very, this sparsity is very high, very, very low. And for, for this matrix, when we run AMP, it completely, completely uh, favored. So these are some more results. For the sparsity, uh, for this uh, correlations in the matrix from highly random to highly structured, this SSD, this algorithm, seems uh, uh, completely insensitive to the structure correlations in the matrix. But all these other algorithms, uh, for, for us, what we tested, they are, when the correlations, it seems the performance becomes quite, quite uh, deteriorated. And the speed of this SSD is uh, uh, actually it's, uh, it's comparable to OMP because when we compute this, this G, we can repeatedly compute this G by this accelerated dual ascent process or even by more advanced methods. For example, the previous speaker has talked about. So the algorithm is about six times slower than OMP. So summary of story one, we have designed a very simple algorithm using this shortest but easy to get solution to guide the search for sparse solutions. And it is, we have some indication that it is highly tolerant to structural correlations in the measurement. But at the moment, there is no theoretical analysis So I will change to story two, but if you have questions, please ask. Yeah. Completely lost. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. This is a paper. Uh -huh. mm. The paper was published in last year. Mm. No feedback, actually, from the, the, the colleagues, as usual. So come, come to the next story. It's about active online learning in binary perceptions. Uh, I think 
science is usually is such a process. First, you, you have some observations, it's a passive, and then you might form some hypothesis, and you, you refine this hypothesis by experiment, designed, designed queries, and then finally you might get some abstraction and get some theory. So we look at this, uh, this, this problem from a very simple model. It's perception. It's also dis discussed quite a lot. This, this perception is a, a building block of this multi-layer neural network. Basically, it's uh, one many to one. You have inputs or n-dimensional inputs, and you have some vectors uh, uh, weight on these edges. And you have output. This output, in this binary case, is just the, the sign of this uh, uh, product. So we look at this the problem from this student uh, teacher scenario. The teacher's uh, weight j t t one t t n is hidden to the student, so, but the student can ask questions. So they can input binary questions, cosine one, cosine two, cosine n, and uh, the teacher will give out uh, answer, sigma, either one or zero, minus one, or one or zero. And then the student tries to Guess what the teacher's vector t is according to these questions. The problem, the question is how to how to how to learn as, as quickly as possible. Mm. This question actually has been asked by by many people in the 1990s. Mm. So uh, in mathematical times, it's just this. You you can ask. Questions, cos cosine mu, so it's the, the mu's question, and it's binary. And the, the teacher gives the mu's answer, it's also binary. So given these P questions, then you can design the, the version space <coughs> or the partition version. It's just all these parallel vectors J that are consistent with the P questions. And from this, you can compute the probability that the teacher's vector J should be. It's just the, the it's just the if the teacher's vector is consistent with this P P P patterns, it will contribute one, and the, the denominator is just the total number of such patterns. For this, you can basically you can compute the mean value of each vector j of of each of each weight j j i, and you can then get a very simple algorithm. Just take the sign of this mean uh, this mean value j i, and take this to be the teachers guess the guess the teacher, teachers. Weight is this ice element. When you use the spin glass theory of belief of vocation, or you can find the letter in this online iteration process when this, the, the questions are asked one after another, and each question is used once, you find that this, this weight will. We are evolve according to this equation. <clears throat> so, when you ask ask the the p, p plus one's questions, and this weight j i is is an ice edge, we are be j i p plus some uh, help learning terms. Mm. So we use this algorithm to to perform online learning. 
Then there are two methods to online learning. First is pass is 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 random. So the questions are cos one, cos two, cos p are just randomly chosen. The student doesn't think about the problem. They just ask random questions. And the second one is the questions are highly designed. You ask one question, you get the answer, and then you guess the teacher's signal, teacher's weight, and then you design the next question. And then you design the third question. So for when the system is quite, quite small, for example, it's less than 25, we can perform exhaust search. We find that this random learning is not so good. The error decreases slowly, even after you have asked two times questions, the error is still non-zero. But if you design the questions, ask the best questions, it, you just need to ask n questions to completely and exactly figure out the teacher's hidden message. <coughs> this is for simulations for large system. For this passive learning, when the patterns are random, using this MAP <coughs> strategy, we find this uh, relative error decreases to zero, <coughs> not, not zero, when the number of questions asked versus the dimension of the problem is uh, approach 4.5. But this is still a tail. It means when in this path of learning, although the generalization array could be zero, but still, it's extremely difficult to completely figure out the teacher's, teacher's work. So this is the, success. the rate of success means you, you can, you, how do you say, you completely get the teacher's work without any error, and this, uh, horizontal axis is a fraction of questions, the relative number of questions you ask. When the system becomes increases, the dimension increases, the success rate actually decreases. So it means for this uh, random, <coughs> random online learning, probably it's impossible to completely learn the teachers worked there's still some mistakes. That might be not be good, because um, in physics, you usually want to get the grand theory, but uh, maybe it's uh, impossible. So we tend to active learning. So we want to make <coughs> to learn as quickly as possible and learn without error. So, the question is how to, how to design the questions. Actually, it's, uh, the idea is, uh, is very simple. When you ask the, the next question, you should make sure that this question, cosine p plus 1, will exactly cut the solution space into two equal, equal half, two equals, equal parts. So that you ask question, the size of the, of the solution space shrink by one half, this is the best. And this idea is a little new from 1972 to, yeah. but I only know that in 19, no, 2018. So I'm actually very stupid. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, this, this is intractable because you have to 
get all the solutions, candidate solutions, and then you cut by, by half. How to make it practical? The practical is also uh, after some derivation. It's found that you can just ask this, this question. You want to do the newly designed vector, cosine p plus 1, to be orthogonal to the mean vector j after the p solution. This is quite similar, but it's still a little bit different. <coughs> In from the, what's the early work? The early work in 1990, 1992. The difference is that they use not the mean value, but just the, 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 the actual value at the piece stage. What is J? This is J i? Yes. yes. Yeah, GI, yes, mm. okay. So uh, GI is, the, so there are some, some, some edges between the input and output. So GI is the ice, the weight on the ice element, on, on the ice edge. Mm. Yeah, yes, uh, and this value is, in, in, in my case, is plus one or minus one. So, yeah. So this <coughs> JIP means this, it's the estimated mean value of JI of the student after online learning P patterns. So if you use this trick, we can design an actual learning algorithm. First, we get a solution, or get, get a vector cosine p plus one. There are many such vectors. And then we input this vector to the teacher and get a feedback cosine plus one. And then we use this uh, equation to update the mean value of the, of the weight vector. And then we repeat again. Yeah. We did some simulations <coughs> also for different size and found the relative area now decreases to about 2.2. Mm. Yes. Mm. RP is just a small constant. Mm. It's uh, yeah. Mm. Not, not the learning rate. Uh. In this, uh, when you uh, use <coughs> the spin glass theory to compute the evolution of GI, there is some numerical value, RP. Uh, uh, is more or less independent of uh, of the learning process. So the <coughs> but the, the key point is that first now it only needs to a little bit more than two times the questions to 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 make the relative area decrease to zero. And also the other point is that actually, actually, this actual learning, the area will be exactly zero. Mm. Means completely learns the teacher's signal. Mm. And actually, there is kind of, this kind seems to be a phase transition phenomenon. If the Questions, number of questions is less than this value. 
the success, exactly success fraction is approach zero. But if you ask enough questions, the success rate becomes one. This here, success means exactly success. So in Chinese, it's dong wu. Suddenly, you, you get the message. But you need this value, 2.25 20, questions to ask to get this completely, uh, completely re reconstruct the teacher's signal. So this is by, by, by this kind of Bayes or uh, optimal linear, statistical linear. But this, of course, is not so good as deductive reasoning. If we use the human, human power, deductive reasoning, actually, we only need to ask n plus log 2n questions to get the, get the signal. OK, the summary of story two. Active learning is much more efficient. Mm -hmm. So it, it pays to, to ask difficult, difficult questions, but you have to design the questions. Mm -hmm. And also there seems to be kind of dynamic phase transition in this learning process, online learning process. Again, there is no theory. Mm -hmm. So I, I stop here. And uh, again, uh, if you want to give more to the detail, there is a paper written by me and published in the best journal, theoretical physics journal in China. Yeah. It's called Communications in Theoretical Physics. It's a journal that uh, our dear professor Aurel also publishes. So you should also follow his lead. So thank you for, for listening. Thank you very much.